Chapter 14 Jack and Jill When I was residing in the old mandir, there used to be one British couple by name Mr. and Mrs. Crook. One day, they brought two puppies named Lily and Billy and requested me, Swami, these puppies were born in our house. We wish to keep them in Swami's divine presence. Even though we are not here physically, we feel satisfied that we are living in Swami's divine presence if Swami can kindly keep these puppies with Him. I agreed to their request and kept those puppies with me. In course of time, Lily gave birth to two puppies. I named them Jack and Jill. They were none other than Ramesh and Suresh, who were my classmates earlier. Unable to bear my separation, they died and were reborn as these puppies to live in my presence. I was living in the old mandir then. They had so much love for Swami that they used to be with me always. Even while I was sleeping, they used to be with me, one by the side of my head and the other at my feet. They never slept during night. They kept themselves awake the whole night, barking at the sight of any person. Thus, they remained with me always. After some time, the Maharani of Mysore came to Puttaparthi to have my darshan. She was an orthodox woman. She never touched anyone. Not only that, she would not touch the articles touched by others. If she required cow's milk, the cow had to be first bathed and then only milked. She was so much orthodox. She never used to take food if some dogs barked. Hence, her secretary would visit the ashram before her and inform the people there, If there are any dogs here, kindly keep them in a room under lock. There was no motorable road to Puttaparthi in those days. Hence, she had to get down from the car at Karnatanagepalli and then walk the distance up to the old mandir in Puttaparthi. She did not like to walk on the footprints of others. Therefore, she had brought four wooden planks in a van behind her car. First, they would put two planks on the path for her to walk on them. Then, the next two planks would be placed and she would place her feet and walk on them. The process was repeated until she arrived at the mandir and had Swami's darshan. She was a great devotee. In those days, there were no hotels anywhere near Karnatanagepalli. So, the driver had to come to the mandir for dinner in the night. The Maharani told the driver, I wish to sleep one night in the mandir premises. Hence, I will not return today. The driver, however, had to return to the place where he kept the car after dinner. It was already dark. There were no electric lights in the street. Puttaparthi was a remote, primitive village 60 years ago. In the same primitive village, there is now airport, a university and a railway station. But there were not even good roads then. I called Jack and instructed go with the driver to help him in finding the way. The driver was surprised and thought, how can this dog show me the way? Then I told the driver, the God in this dog will show you the way. While the dog Jack was walking ahead, the driver followed it. He slept in the car for that night. There was heavy rain then. Hence, the dog slept under the car near the tire. The driver woke up early in the morning. That was winter season. Hence, the driver wanted to start the car and run it for a short distance to ensure that the engine was in perfect condition before the Maharani came out to resume her return journey. He started the car and the tire moved over the back of the dog Jack. His spinal cord was broken. See, how faithful was that dog? The students, teachers and devotees, everyone should note this point carefully. Unable to bear with the excruciating pain on account of its broken spine, Jack started moving towards the mandir. It had to cross the river Chitravati, dragging its body somehow through the sand. It was profusely bleeding. There used to be a washerman by name Subbana near the entrance of the old mandir. 
he came running into the mandir and informed me swami our jack's back is broken it is coming here groaning with great pain i came out and went near the door calling jack jack it was crying with uncontrollable pain and fell at my feet the moment it saw me see how faithful it was it wanted to breathe its last falling at my feet therefore it dragged itself to my feet from such a long distance in spite of the great pain it was undergoing i arranged for some milk from the mandir and poured the milk into the mouth of jack after drinking the milk it lifted its two front legs and put them on my hand and breathed its last looking at me faithfully i arranged for its burial in the backyard of the old mandir however i told the people to bury it on one side so that enough space was available for another samadhi unable to bear the separation of jack the other dog jill gave up eating food and died after a few days jill was buried next to the samadhi of jack thereafter i got one tulsi brindavan built in that place it used to be there till very recently when the renovation of the old mandir was taken up for the purpose of rebuilding the kalyana mandapam in that place tulsi brindavan was demolished i was in bangalore then thus ramesh and suresh always wanted to be near swami and even took birth as dogs for the purpose they finally merged in swami their story reminds one the truth that those who are faithful to god will never lack anything what a great faith what great love those dogs had towards swami even if a fraction of their faith and love was there in a human being his life would have been sanctified unfortunately today man lacks such faith people have unending desires but who is living up to the ideals of swami how is it possible for your desires to be fulfilled if you give up the ideals what you have to learn is whatever difficulties you may undergo never keep yourself away from god's love if you hold on to god's love steadfastly even mountainous difficulties will melt away like ice